Hey guys, today we are going to answer the question, how do I write two-step equations from models and solve them? So to solve two-step equations, that just means there's going to be two steps to solve them. We are going to isolate the variable by undoing the operations that are happening to the variable in reverse order. Basically, we're going to be doing the inverse of what is happening to the variable. And this can usually be accomplished with these steps. The first thing we will do is undo the addition or subtraction with reverse operations to zero out the constant. And then we will undo the multiplication or the variable with inverse operations to eliminate the coefficient. So we will usually add or subtract and then multiply or divide. And we want to make sure that we verify the solution by substituting our answer back in. So we're going to use these three questions to help us solve. We are going to first ask ourselves what we're solving for. And then we're going to ask ourselves what is happening to that variable that we're solving for. And then question three is how do we undo what is happening in reverse order? And step three is kind of going to be like our plan of action. Okay, let's look at number one. They have a model for us and they want us to write and solve this modeled equation. So on the left side of the equation, I have 2x plus 2. Equals on the right side, I have 6. So let's write out our plan of action. First question is, what am I, what am I solving for? I'm solving for x. Second question is, what is happening to x? Remember, multiplication and division come first in order of operations and then addition or subtraction. So the first thing is I'm multiplying by 2, and then I am adding 2 to x. And the third step is our plan of action. We need to do the inverse of this. So we need to go in reverse order and do inverse operations. So the first thing I will undo is that plus 2. The inverse of plus 2 is subtract 2. And then I need to do the inverse of times 2, which is divide by 2. Okay, this is kind of our plan of action here. Let's talk about why this works. So if you think about putting on shoes and socks, pretend that X is you and you're putting on your shoes and socks. You are going to put on your sock first, and then you are going to put on your shoes. And when you go to take them off, you have to take your shoe off before you can take your sock off. So that's why we go in reverse order. You can kind of think of that analogy. So let's solve our equations with these three steps. The first thing I'm going to do is undo that plus 2 by subtracting 2 from both sides. And I get 2x. I bring down the 2x. 2 minus 2 is 0. And then 6 minus 2 is 4. So I did the minus 2. Now I need to divide both sides by 2 to get x by itself and I get x equals 2. Let's see how we could have modeled this with the equation. So the first thing that I did was subtract 2 from both sides. So if I take away 2 from the model, I'm left with 2x equals 4, which is what I had right here. Then to figure out what 1x is, I'm going to split my x's into groups of two. So I split in half one x is half of what's over here, which would be two. So we just proved with the model that x equals two. Okay, let's look at the next one. I need to do the same thing, write and solve the equation modeled below. So on the left side, I have three x plus one equals four. Okay, let's ask ourselves those three questions so we can develop our plan. First question is, what are we solving for? X. Second question is, what is happening to X? The first thing I see happening to X is times 3. And then I'm adding 1 to it. And now my third step is my plan to undo that. So the first thing I will need to do is get rid of that plus 1 by subtracting 1. And then I'll divide both sides by 3. So now we have our plan. Let's go ahead and use this plan to solve our equation. So I need to remove that constant of plus 1 by subtracting 1 from both sides. And I get 3x equals 4 minus 1 is 3. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I get x equals 1. Let's show with the model how we know that x equals 1 as well. So the first thing that I did to solve this equation was take away 1, 
So I'm gonna take away one from both sides of the equation and I'm left with three X equals three. And then we had to divide by three or split by three. So one X equals a third of what's over here, which is just one. Okay, now we have six questions where we are going to solve them, verify their solution, and then we will graph the solution. So number three, I have four X plus two equals 18. Let's ask ourselves those three questions. What are we solving for? We are solving for X. What is happening to X? It is being multiplied by four and then we're adding two to it. And then third question is how do we undo that? First thing we undo is the plus two by subtracting two. And then second thing we do is undo the times four by dividing by four. So here's our plan of action. Let's use that to solve the equation now. So first thing I need to do is subtract two from both sides. This zeroes out, so I'm just left with four X on this side and then 18 minus two is 16. And now I'm going to divide both sides by four and 16 divided by four is four. So I get X equals four. Okay, now I just need to verify the solution. So I'm going to substitute in four for X and make sure that I get 18. So it'll be four times four plus two equals 18. Four times four is 16 and 16 plus two is 18. So we just verified that X equals four is the solution. And now I just want to put this on the number line. Four will go in the middle. That was our solution. Three is right below that and five is right above it. All right, number four, let's ask ourselves those three questions. What are we solving for? We're gonna be solving for X. What is happening to X? The first thing that's happening to X that I see is X is being divided by three. And then X has two subtracted from it. Can write this out better. X is being divided by three and then subtracting two. Okay, so now let's do the inverse of this. So I'm gonna start by undoing the minus two by adding two, and then I'll undo the divided by three by multiplying by three. So here is our plan, plus two minus three. So let's do that to solve for X. I add two first, negative two plus two zeros out, and I'm left with X divided by three equals three plus two is five. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by three. The times three and divided by three cancel out and I'm left with X equals five times three is 15. Okay, now I just need to verify that 15 is the solution here. So I'm going to replace X with 15 and I'm gonna see if 15 divided by three minus two is equal to three. So 15 divided by three is five and five minus two is three. So we did this correctly and the solution is X equals 15. Last thing I need to do is plot this on the number line. So my solution, I'll draw a dot for it. It was 15, 14 is right below that and 16 is right above it. All right, number five, I am solving for X. What is happening to X? The first thing I see that's happening is we are multiplying by five and then we are subtracting 10. And then the inverse operation, I'm gonna start from the end, the inverse of minus 10 is plus 10. And then the inverse of times five is dividing by five. So here is our plan. Let's use it to isolate X. So the first thing I need to do is add 10 and I get 5x equals 35. And then the last thing I do is divide by 5 to undo that times 5 and I get x equals 7. And let's verify 
that seven is the correct solution for x here by substituting it in. So five times seven minus 10, I wanna make sure that's 25. Five times seven is 35, and 35 minus 10 is 25. So we just verified that x equals seven is our solution, so I can plot that on the number line. There's seven, six is right below it, and eight is right above it. Okay, number six, I have 12 plus 13x equals 51. I am solving for x. I know that this is written in a little bit different order, but let's still think about what is happening to x in order. The closest thing I see happening is we are multiplying by 13. And then we are adding this positive 12 to it. So now I need to undo that in reverse order. So I need to undo that plus, positive 12 first, that plus 12 by subtracting 12. And then I'm gonna undo the times 13 by dividing by 13. So now we have our plan, let's use it to isolate x. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 12 from both sides. And 12 minus 12 is zero, and then I bring down the 13x. And 51 minus 12 is 39. And then I divide by 13 to undo the times 13, and x is isolated, and 39 divided by 13 is three. Now let's verify that three is the solution by substituting it in. So 12 plus 13 times, I'm replacing x with three, should equal 51. So 12 plus 13 times three is 39, should equal 51. Let's make sure that's true. Nine plus two is 11, 51. So we get 51 equals 51. So I just verified that x equals three. Okay, so three is gonna go in the middle right there with four right below it and, oh no, two right below it and four right above it. Number seven, 11x minus 20 equals 101. So I am solving for x. The first thing I see happening to x is it's being multiplied by 11 and then we are subtracting 20 from it. And then my plan to undo this would be to undo the minus 20 first by adding 20 and then undo the times 11 by dividing by 11. So let's follow this plan to solve for x. So first thing I'm going to do is add 20 to remove that constant. Negative 20 plus 20 zeros out and I bring down the 11x and 101 plus 20 is 121. And then x is being multiplied by 11, so I undo it by dividing by 11. And 121 divided by 11 is 11. And let's make sure that x equals 11 is the solution by substituting it back in. So 11 times 11 minus 20 should equal 101. 11 times 11 is 121 and 121 minus 20 is 101. So x equals 11 is the solution. I will plot that in the middle. 10 is right below it and 12 is right above it. All right, number eight, x divided by four plus 14 equals 16. So I am solving for x. The first thing that's happening to x is it's being divided by four, and then we are adding 14 to it. So the inverse of divided by four plus 14 would be to first subtract 14, and then the opposite of dividing by four is multiplying by four. So now let's follow this plan to solve for x. The opposite of plus 14 is minus 14, I bring down the x divided by four and then 14 minus 14 zeros out 
and 16 minus 14 is 2. And then I have x divided by 4, and the opposite of dividing by 4 is multiplying by 4. So those operations undo each other, so x is isolated, and 2 times 4 is 8. Let's verify that x is 8 by substituting it in. So 8 divided by 4 plus 14 should equal 16. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 2 plus 14 is 16. So x equals 8 is the correct solution. I'm going to plot that in the middle. 7 is right below it, and 9 is right above it.